going on, man? I'm going to follow up this week and give you guys a second rundown. I think today is the 12th. So we talked to you on Tuesday, the 10th. I talked about shallow water fishing on fork this time of year when the lake turns over. Um, and it's really important to realize that when the lake turns over, the oxygen levels get really bad. And realistically, the shallow water is where your vegetation is, if in fact you have it. Um, in which right now, the lake does have some vegetation in certain areas, mostly the northern part. Um, and the better vegetation is going to be your hydrilla grass, your coontail grass, your milfoil grass, your pond weed. Something that grows rooted from the bottom and filters and makes oxygen. Um, the lake levels and everything are pretty good. We're, we're 400, 400.64 yesterday, 400.63 today. Same clarity, zero to one. Some of the creeks are a little dirtier and some of them are a little cleaner. And 76, 78 degree water temperature. So those parameters are good. This is basically two and a half feet, a little more than, a little less than two and a half feet below full pool. The key is again, fish shallow water, fish the creeks, the drains, find vegetation, find areas where wind is maybe crashing on points and things if the wind's blowing hard enough because that bubbles and all that churning of, as it crashes the shoreline oxygenates the water. Um, and again, a turnover is, is when a thermocline breaks and the, the bottom and the top mix and you generally have bad and low dissolved oxygen levels. So the fish don't feel really good. Um, I can tell you that several things. Turnovers tend to happen shallow water first, mid lake second, and basin third depending on the style of the lake. Um, turnovers in West Coast lakes, they're all reservoirs. They're all kind of the same. So it happens throughout the whole lake at one time. Here in, in Lake Fork, for example, or some of these shallower lakes with fingers and arms, the, the shallow backwaters, honestly, like Birch Creek and Running Creek and Coffee Creek and all that, they turned over a month ago. Um, that, those backwaters turned over a month ago and were funky colored and had debris floating methane gases and yellow bubbles. And now those areas are actually healthy to whereas the main body just turned over and, and down south, the deeper water, tur water turned over. And now you got yellow bubbles and, and the, the really bad water in the main lake. Um, so again, what I'm telling you publicly is, you know, the lake doesn't always, the whole entire lake doesn't always turn over at once. And remember that the turnover actually happens in about 24 hours. That's just the breaking of the thermocline and the blending, the blending of the two layers of water, two water columns, two separate water columns that were going on during the summer, an upper and a lower, and they break and blend, okay? You have all that dead debris, all the oils, all the methane gases, all the junk on the bottom that floats now, rises to the surface, and that doesn't help. That's what we see. That's the reminisce, the after effect from the turnover, okay? So scientifically, the turnover happens in 24 hours, 48 hours max. The after effects can be two or three weeks. Basically, what I recommend you do um, publicly is, again, fish shallow. You should be fishing in less than four feet of water for the most part for the catchable fish. I'm not going to say you won't find something deeper because you may if you find good, clean water, okay? And, and the turnover, again, the turned over water can get right real fast with some fresh rain, uh, winds that really continue to mix things, vegetation again. If we had deep vegetation like we used to, you know, back in the 90s, you didn't see much of a turnover because there was so much hydrilla. When the lake turned over, the hydrilla just kind of immediately gobbled it up, filtered it, and, and, and the oxygen levels would never were very bad for very long. Now we've got hardly any vegetation, so the oxygen levels stay bad for sometimes two, three weeks or more. It's very typical to have a turnover this time of year. Listen, shallow, shallow, shallow. Start with top waters, poppers, buzz baits, frogs, buzz frogs, things like that. If they're not eating that, then go to your under, your, your under the water. It means they're not willing to bust the surface. If they're not willing to bust the surface, go under. Chatter baits, spinner baits, under spins. If you find pretty quick, within an hour or so fishing, in the morning time especially, 
that you're not having a reaction bite. You're feeling like it's tranquil, it's dead. There's not a lot happening. You don't really have to back off much. Stay fishing shallow and go to your soft plastics like small crawfish style baits like this Bass Assassin whoop craw um, and or just basic Berkeley power worms. Okay, Mark Pack taught me that, or even trick worms. Just a, a trick worm wacky style can be really effective on those non-active fish that aren't willing to chase. Another really good bait, a VM chopstick. Okay, just a VM chopstick, even Texas rig, but weightless. It's so shallow that now don't have it be on the bottom. Um, have it just weightless. And and I believe me, going back through the backwaters with with a a topwater spinner bait and a, and a chopstick, and I just gave you about the best way you could go fishing this time of year. Okay, um, and that's kind of it. So generally, guys, um, again, the Berkeley event's coming next week. When I do a few reports, I'll talk about some specific Berkeley baits. But these days, Berkeley covers everything. They have hard baits, they have soft bait line, they've got spinner baits, they've got everything you need. Um, they really do cover the baits from A to Z. That's that's a, a fact. And Berkeley has done an incredible job to where really none of the stuff is junk, whether it be the El Chapo, which is a whopper plopper, um, the Berkeley Bullet Pop, or the, which is a popper, kind of like a yellow magic in a way, the Jaywalker, which is a walking bait. There's your top waters. Uh, again, they got spinner baits. They've got, uh, I can't remember what the, the chatter bait or vibe jigs called right now. It won't, uh, slobber knocker, I think it is called. Uh, but again, they, they've got it all. So if you need any of these baits, hit up Lake Fork Marina, um, right where the event's held. Lake Fork Marina has a really full stock of everything, hard baits and soft plastics. And um, if you want a little more information than I give publicly, I always invite you to come over to my members only channel. It's real simple. It's a private subscription channel. In order to do so, you need to look in the description of this video, find the link to members only, click on it, follow the procedure, join our members only channel. Um, we have about three, I think, over a little over 320 something members total. We have uh, 81 in the Let's Talk Fishing and we have 244, 245, and then just the general members. Um, but other than that, I really appreciate you. Big shout out to all the sponsors, Texas uh, Fishing, um, Texas TIFR, Texas Insider Fishing Report, Berkeley, Abu Garcia, Bajio Sunglasses, um, Impact Lures, Santone Tight Lines, Roger Belk, Lake Fork Trophy Lures, you know, there's so many good companies these days, and it's really, really my pleasure and my honor to be represented by, by so many of these different groups that, that support everything we do, whether we're guiding on the water or sitting here in the studio giving you guys a rundown. Remember, a lot of those places offer discounts. If you go to Lake Fork Trophy Lures, for example, tell them McFarland sent you. Use the code MCF10%. They'll give you 10% on in-house pours. Um, that's all I got for you this week. Look forward to seeing you next week when I come out Tuesday with, with a little more Berkeley information. Um, we'll keep it specific for the Berkeley event. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button, comment below. Be safe and have a great weekend fishing.